UTSA football is on a bye week, but we figured we'd still talk some football with the voice of the Roadrunners, Andy Everett. And because basketball season is just about two weeks away, we're going to talk some basketball as well. Is that surprising you real quick that basketball season is already it, here? It uh, takes forever to get here, and then when it's here, it goes by quickly. Football is already eight weeks in, so it's been a, a very fast season. UTSA football, yeah, eight weeks into the season. They're on a bye week this week. We saw some change at quarterback this past week against Southern Miss. The freshman, Jordan Weeks, in there. What did you see out of him? Well, I thought he was nervous to start. I think he showed some nervousness early on, but I think he settled down quickly. There's always an adjustment with the speed of the game. I promise UTSA and Southern Miss was a faster game for him than any game he ever played at Wimberley. But you love his tools. You love what he brings to the, to the table. Six foot four, 220 pounds. He can stand in the pocket. They obviously have to protect him better. He uh, gave up, six, they had six sacks, but they also have to get him to learn to get rid of the ball sooner. So there's a little bit of give and take on both of those. And there were situations where he's got to learn to get rid of it so to avoid the sack. And I think that'll happen down the road. At times earlier this year, we saw a couple of quarterbacks in, Grundy and Gillens kind of alternating snaps. In this past game, Weeks took all but one snap. Does that kind of signify to you this might be the plan? He might be the quarterback going forward for well, a while? Well, I think you can still play him in two more games to evaluate him and then decide if you want to play him the last two games or keep the red shirt on him with the new rules. UTSA has to figure out what they ha have now and what they need to go and recruit to. Uh, Grundy will be back next year. DJ will not. So there could be a quarterback battle. Frank Harris is going to be back in the spring, and he was doing well last spring before he got hurt. So... Do we have a quarterback that we can count on for next year, or do we have to still go recruit more? Now, you always recruit quarterbacks because you can never have too many of them, but do you need a junior college quarterback that can play right away? Do you need a, a, a freshman that can come in and play right away? Who do you recruit? Who can you get? So I think this evaluation process these, this past week and the next four determine how they go about their recruiting plan for December. Is that kind of the same in the backfield where Brendan Brady, another freshman, got uh, some snaps there? Well, B.J. Daniels will be back for his junior year next year, but Brendan Brady becomes the second back. Jalen Rhodes graduates after this year, so what do you have in Brendan Brady? Uh, do you still need to go get other running backs? There's running backs that are not playing this year that are redshirting and others behind them, so where do you stand with your running back depth chart? I think with four games to go and needing to win three just to get bowl eligible, and you hope that that can still happen, you're trying to get bowl eligible, but you're also trying to evaluate what your future is so that next year when your schedule is easier, you have a chance to win eight or nine games and not go through this. And maybe by this stage of the season, you're more secure in your, in your postseason uh, aspirations. It is a tough stretch coming up for the Roadrunners. UAB is next, and, and then it gets a, a little bit tougher. So that's going to be a pretty brutal end to the season. Well, UAB, I'm told, has 16 six-year seniors. <laughs> they kind of uh, took away their program for a couple of years two years ago. They've been back the last two years. A lot of those players stuck around and got extra years from the NCAA for staying around. So you're playing against 23, 24, probably 25-year-old guys out there. That makes a big difference. These guys are full-fledged adults playing against kids that are just out of high school. So that does make a difference, and that will be a, a very difficult game for UTSA. Well, I mentioned we talk a little UTSA basketball because the season begins November 7th. That's going to be right around the corner. What's your assessment of how this team looks from what you've seen? Well, I set through a 5-27 and 27 season three years ago, then the miracle season to get 14 wins two years ago and a 20-win season last year. I can't wait for basketball to start. I think this is going to be a fun year for them. Uh, Javon Jackson is a great player. I don't think he's going to be able to be completely cleared to play until December, which means he'll miss some of the marquee games against Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. But he's a terrific player and a, and a fun player to watch. And I encourage people to come watch these, this team play. This is entertaining basketball. They play fast. They play up-tempo. They shoot lots of threes. They're going to score in the 80s in most games when, they're, when their offense is on. They defend well. They've got a bunch of other guys coming back. Keaton Wallace is going to be great. Uh, Giovanni De Nicolau, uh, Nick Allen. They've got newcomers. They've got guys that are going to play. That are, that are probably 10, 11 deep on the team. And Steve Henson and his staff have done a terrific job recruiting talent. So this is going to be a really, really fun year. And that all gets started in a couple weeks, November 7th. And UTSA football, of course, will wrap up its season over the next four weeks. So, Andy, plenty to talk about. Thank you, as always. Absolutely.